Hi guys, this is Eric from Dumb Game Dev, and today we're going to do a tutorial by request. And in this tutorial, what we're going to do is create a door that opens by a trigger. And not only that, when you get close to the door, a GUI, a UGUI button is going to pop up, and you're going to click it to open the door, or you know, not click it to open the door. And if you leave the trigger area, the UGUI will disappear. So a door, you get close, a button pops up, you click the button that says open, or you leave and the button disappears. So actually the first thing I'm going to do is create the UGUI. So let's just go ahead and do that. And uh, I'm just going to choose UI and choose button. So I'm just going to have a single button. And if I click 2D here, I'll be able to see my layout a little easier. Hopefully here, let's maybe turn off the light. And let's turn off the skybox. That's better. Okay, so where is my button? My button's way down here at the bottom. It's not even in the screen, so that's not good. Let's grab the button and just move it into... Uh-oh. Move it where we want it. There we go. Now we can see it's on the screen. And I'm not going to get into Yugui too much, but we'll just position it where we want and I'm gonna click text and give it a new name. We'll just call this Open Door. So that seems about right. I think when I, this starts, I want it to be hidden. So we'll just turn it off for the moment. Actually, you know what? Let's turn it on. Okay, the next thing we need is a trigger area for this uh, canvas to turn it on and off because we only want this to appear when we're close to the door. So I will create a um, cube to use for my door. I'm just going to call this door and I'll set it at 000. And this will be the position of my door. Let's make this a little more door-like. So we'll say three by maybe, uh, I guess three by six by 0.2 is sort of a door. And we can give it a door handle. And let's not do it that way. Let's just create it not as a child, I guess. There we go, that's better. Okay, let's make it a child now, and we'll just reposition this somewhere where we can see it. I guess it's too small, we can't even see it in the door. So... Okay, that's probably got to be the ugliest doorknob ever. But it's going to have to be just fine for what we're doing. Okay. Now let's create a, a trigger area around this door. So I'm just going to make a nice, another sphere here. We'll make this much larger. Okay, let's make it even even bigger than that. Let's just use the scale tool. So we want our trigger area to be about, yeah, I guess about that big. Okay, so I'll turn off the mesh render so we just have the trigger area left over. You can remove this component. I want to make sure this is a trigger. And I'm going to give a rigid body because we need a rigid body to start a trigger, but we'll just use kinematic so it doesn't sink down anywhere. Okay. So now on this sphere, let's add a Playmaker FSM. And we can add the action, we'll search for trigger. 
So we have a trigger event. And so on trigger enter, and with uh, untagged, let's say player, when the player enters, send event, and we'll call this show canvas. And you can call this whatever you want. This is just what I've decided to, to call it. And what we'll do is activate a game object. And the game object that we're going to activate is the canvas. And let's even have this reverse. So when they leave this trigger arrow, we're going to have it turn off the canvas again. So we will have another event, another trigger event. And the trigger event will be on trigger exit with the player. We'll have a new event called hide canvas. And then we'll go back. So on this state, we want to make sure we choose activate again for game object. And we can use the activate to also deactivate something just by unclicking it. And what do we want to deactivate is the canvas. So state one is hide canvas. And then state two will be show canvas. So we can make this red for hidden and then green for showing. Okay, so let's make a fake player. Let's call tr this trigger area. Trigger area. Okay, we'll make a fake player to enter this area. We'll make a, uh, say, a capsule. And I'll just move him out of the trigger area to start off. And I'm going to call him player. And let's remember to give him the player tag. Don't forget to save your game. And now let's hit play and see what happens. So when we enter him into the trigger area, the Yugui shows. It hides and shows. Good. Okay, the next thing we need to do is make some kind of animation for our door so that we can trigger that with this button. So to do that, we're going to make a door animation. We need to make a parent for this door first. So I'll make an empty game object. And I'm going to call this door hinge. And I'm going to make the door a child of the door hinge. And right now, if we rotate it, it's rotating right on the center axis, which is not how a door rotates, right? So we can move this door over slightly. So let's first do this. So we know it's three in, in width. So let's move it over three. So I think we're going to do negative one point five, or sorry, not rotation, position. Negative 1.5. Let's try our door hinge. Rotate. Uh-oh, that's the wrong side. So I guess we're going to do 1.5. And now our door opens and closes properly. So what we're going to animate is actually this door hinge, not the door itself. Let's put it back to 000. And then we're going to make an animation. So we're let's open a window, not animator, but we want animation. That will give us this animation window. And we can create a new animation. So I can make a folder called animations. And I will we'll call this open door. So we need to add something to this uh, that we want to animate. So I'm going to animate the door hinge. So I'll drop it on. Oh, it's already there. 
So I've already added it to there here. So what we're going to do is then is hit record. We want to add a keyframe to the position of where we want it. Then I'm going to add a keyframe here and have it rotate to 90. So actually let's have it open the other way, so minus 90. And then add a few more seconds and then back to zero. So you can see it automatically adds keyframes here for us if, as long as we change a value. If we don't change a value we have to add our own keyframes. So now we can unhit record. We should be able to scrub through. So it opens and then closes. I guess really we just want it to open. So I can delete these keyframes. I just want it to open in this case. So let's save that. We can get away from our animator now. And what do we want now? So now we need a way to play this door opening and closing. We need to hook up this button to do that. So let's go to the button itself on canvas button. And on the button, let's make a FSM. So now there's a Playmaker FSM. And what I want it to do is this button to communicate with this FSM. So when I push this button, something happens on the FSM itself. This is going to require an extra component. And the name of the component is, let's see if we can find it here, UGUI proxy. I think it's, I don't know if it's the UGUI component proxy. Yeah, this looks like it. So it's called the Playmaker UGUI component proxy. And I'm not sure if I can even find it here. Let's find a custom event, system event. We're looking for an on click. And sometimes I have trouble finding this. So we could just make our own. Let's go to uh, events. We can make a new event called, we'll just call it click. And I'll make this a global event. And the target is this button, yes. And the FSM owner is also on this button, yes. The name of the event we want, we, let's edit this, and I'm just going to call it click. And that should be it. So it's telling me it's still not implemented because we haven't actually added it to the FSM. So we'll go add global transition, click. And now you can see the warning has disappeared. So now when we push this button, it will click. So what do I want to do? I want this button to open the door to play an animation. So let's take a look at the door hinge animation. And it's actually using Mechanim here. So I could use Mechanim. To OK, I had to think there for a minute how I want to do this using Mechanim. So the problem is, is right now it automatically adds this animation that we created and if we hit play you can see what happens. So it does this, it loops through this animation by default. The first thing I want to do is just double click on this and then choose inspector and disable the loop time here so it doesn't loop over and over again. The next thing I want to do is add a default state that's not this animation. So I'll create a state, an empty one, and then make this the default state. So when it starts, it goes to this empty state and nothing happens. Because I only want to trigger my door when I want to trigger my door. So to do that, I, I'm not even going to create a trigger. I'm just going to leave it just like this. But let's remember the name here, open door. We will just copy this out. Let's go back to Playmaker and go back to our button. And what we want to do is play this animation. So I'm going to go Actions, Play, Animation. But it's not animation I want because that's the legacy system. What I want is Animator Play. And it requires an animator component. So what we want is not the owner. We want the 
door hinge, which has the animator on it. So you'll see the warning disappears. And the state name I want to play is open door. And I don't want every frame, I just want once. Let's save this and see if this actually works. So we move our player up to the door. Our canvas turns on and we hit open door, which triggers our animation. And we pass through. We could use the same process to create a second animation, which is closed door. But I'm not going to do that because you can just basically follow the same, the same steps, create a second animation, put it on your mechanism, and play it by name. So that's the basic way of just creating an, an easy open door animation using a UGUI with the Playmaker UGUI proxy and just using a simple trigger to do it. So hopefully this helped people, and if you have any more specific requests for tutorials, feel free to shoot them to me. Uh, specifically, you can find me in my, or the Playmaker Slack chat channel that we have going. So you can find the link.